happen in the chat box okay so uh i think uh, without further ado uh, i would really like to uh welcome our second speaker uh mr muhammad sam bin manaf uh general manager uh, of ground data solution rnd syndrome berhad uh with his um presentation uh titled emerging geomatics technologies for disaster risk reduction so over to you uh, mr sam Thank you, Dr. Amiro. Thank you so much. Uh, Assalamu alaikum and a uh, very good morning. Can you hear me, eh, Dr. Loud and clear. All right. Thanks a lot. Great. Uh, okay. Uh, Dr. Azman, uh, ladies and gentlemen, so all the participants for today's uh, talk. So, the title that given to me for today's presentation is the Emerging Geometric Technologies in Disaster Management. So, basically, uh, again, as a, a brief introduction by Dr. Uh, Dr. Amirul just now, my name is Muhammad Sambi Manaf from Ground Data Solution R&D Sinemahat, our office based in Petaling Jaya, Selangor. All right, so basically my presentation, I will touch on our uh, work experience, lah, basically our past experience uh, related to disaster. Uh, our core business actually in of course, uh, related to geospatial, uh, GIS, and our, uh, what we call it, uh, core is more toward uh, airborne mapping, uh, LIDAR, and of course, uh, we also provide service like uh, satellite image analysis and uh, uh, GIS uh, systems and so on. So those are part of our services as well. So I will, I will share with you, uh, you all the uh, past experience that we have basically so that is our my, my my main content of my presentation so before i go into that uh direct to the real project that we have done so this uh overview i will touch a bit on the technology overview about the geospatial or you may say also the geometrics uh technology and then of course the first important part of the what you call it uh, technology itself is the data acquisition technology and then come to that data analysis and modeling and application. So I will try as best as possible to relate into the disaster risk reduction or the disaster management kind of uh, topics, you know. All right, so just a brief overview as uh, for the geospatial technology, we cannot uh, run away from these three major components. Of course, the first one is data acquisition component where it involves uh, space uh, technology, the satellites, airborne survey, ground survey. We're not talking about the conventional ground survey here. We have a, a advanced and dedicated tools for uh, survey, acquire the data using the geospatial technology. And then the second component come to the analysis and modeling and also the geodatabase, where this come to the integration of the spatial data, non-spatial data, where we need to do the integration, we need to do the analysis, we need to do modeling, in order to meet various type of applications. So we're talking about disaster here. Disaster is one uh, components of the application where people use the, 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 the geospatial or geometrics technology for, you know, like development planning, flood mitigation, flood or some part of the disaster, disaster management, asset management, plantation management, agriculture management. These are part of the application as I listed here. So it's a lot more if you want to list might be it's not 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 enough space here. So no. So these are uh, the, the 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 technology itself have been very very well, growing in terms of the 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 equipments, the tools, and so on. So the people start to realize not only the private sectors, the government itself also start to realize how important is this technology. Uh, in the, what you call it, uh, do the analysis and to meet what various applications, various needs uh, uh, from every, every applications, no? So these are basically the overview. Okay, when talking about the data acquisitions uh, technology, so we have, uh, as I said, three major components of the data acquisition technology. Of course, the, the top, the highest one is from the satellite imagery. So where we have the satellite and also the space-borne uh, 
for the satellite, the, the, the satellite, various satellites, so many satellites out there that uh, giving us the, 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 the imageries. So from the very high resolution to the very low resolution, it depends on your needs, depends on your applications. So not necessarily the highest is best for your applications, you know. So if you are talking about the line cover mapping, maybe you don't need uh, less than one meter resolution. So this depends what what type of uh, what kind of applications uh, that you are doing. So that uh, the difference uh, kind of resolution of the satellite imagery uh, can meet all those so not necessarily the highest resolution is always best for your application so again there is a uh, the satellite kind of uh, imagery there are a lot of options available nowadays uh, airborne data capture these are talking about the airborne inclusive of the uav or drone mapping currently very famous everybody talking about the drone mapping so that is also part of the i can see also i can group that uav or drone as part of the airborne data capture technology so we're talking about the LIDAR, hyperspectral, autophoto, pictometry, UAV, and so on. Those are the, the technology we're talking about from the airborne, airborne data capture. And also come to the, the lower, lower part, I mean the ground uh, survey. So the ground equipment, we have the mobile laser scanning. We have the terrestrial laser scanning. We have the camera system like this, uh, Urban Explorer, Earth Mine, and so on. So these are uh, various technology for data acquisitions. As I say here, the first component, the most important component is the data acquisition. So these are the various uh, platform, various uh, equipments that we can use for data acquisition. It depends on the needs and the application itself. All right, so come to the, okay, I zoom in a bit on the satellite imagery. There are a lot of satellites, as I said, a uh, quick bird with a 0 0.61 meter resolution, Iconos 8 8, 0 0.82 meter resolution, Spot 6, uh, a bit less resolution, 1.5 meter, Spot 5, uh, 2.5 meter or 5 meter, and so on. So these are the, the, the sources of the satellite imagery where we could uh, order and acquire those data so based on our needs, based on our applications. So, for instance, like Worldview, Worldview Tree here. So, these are the, the, the sample of the satellite imagery. They provide about uh, 30 centimeter kind of resolution of the, the imagery. Okay. So, this is a sample. And then this is a rapid eye satellite image. Even though it's a, a bit less resolution, 5 meter kind of uh, pixel resolutions. But again, with the band combination here, blue, green, red, Red edge near infrared and so on. So these are good for certain applications, you know. So for instance, like here, these are the the, the Beris Dam in Kedah. The imagery showing uh, the current landscape of the the surrounding the dam itself. So these are it depends what what you need, what you want to 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 find out the information from this kind of uh, satellite image. So for instance, these are also the same uh, rapid eye satellite imagery but with a different band combination so we could extract uh, it's good for land cover mapping for instance so we can extract this uh, kind of uh, texture here so these are the oil palm these are the forest area these are the rubber we can do land cover mapping pretty easy using this uh, kind of uh, satellite imagery with this kind of a band combination and so on so these are Kind of a simple brief uh, overview of this uh, satellite imagery and of course uh, many people use this satellite imagery for many purposes many applications uh, for instance like in agriculture some kind of analysis for yield predictions uh, like rice yield prediction in forestry for kind of uh, species identifications and so on so species mapping uh, so a lot of application People are using this imagery for different purposes, different kind of applications. And then again, from, from the shuttle radar, again, from the space technology. So these are, for instance, like these are terrain data from a space shuttle. So for the whole world, so they acquire about 80% of the uh, terrain data for the whole world. So if we zoom in into Malaysia, so we can generate this kind of uh, 3D data, we can generate the contour line and so on. So these are another source of data that are available where 
uh, they have uh, the whole world kind of uh, terrain data from from the spatial year 2000 LGF. So when we overlay with the satellite imagery so we can generate the 3D view for, for the area and so on. So these are basically, if you look at the Google Earth and so on, these, these are the basis of uh, the technology behind it. Of course, uh, everybody knows about the Google Earth, everybody knows about the satellite imagery where you can see easily in the Google Earth. So of course, uh, when you need the up-to-date data, the Google Earth, of course, you, you can get it for free. Just, uh, can zoom in, zoom out for your applications, for your purpose. But when you need the latest up-to-date data, you need to order the data and then there it is come to the, the needs for you to, to, to order the data for the up-to-date and latest data and so on. Okay, there is uh, enough talking about the satellite. So now we're talking about the airborne survey technology. So we have a few different type of uh, tools or sensor. Like first, of course, LIDAR, light detection and ranging. So one of the uh, common and famous uh, technology in acquiring very high resolution terrain data and also the imagery, the couple with the, 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 the camera as well. So pictometry, this is uh, another technology to get the 3D model of the buildings and so on. So this uh, we call it pictometry. Autophoto, this is uh, auto-rectified photo. Accurate photography for, from the airborne. Digital mapping camera, this is the aerial photography, and also some uh, application that need the thermal camera, for instance, like here. This is for kind of search and rescue and so on uh, purpose, and also some some applications for for thermal camera. These are the the the, the airborne uh, kind of uh, sensor or camera that can be used for many type of applications and uh, purposes, and also. Drone. Some some are using a fixed swing. Some are using a helicopter. You know. So this is depend on the 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 the, the sensor and then the suitability of the the project itself. So sometimes we select to use a helicopter if uh, the project is uh, alignment based, where like a road, highway, and so on. If the project is uh, like a flood mitigation area, it's a big square area. So that might be we better use a fixed swing. So these are. Uh, different type of platform, so have different kind of advantages. And then for the small, small project, of course, uh, we might go for drone. So these are much more very easy to mobilize and so on. So less hassle to get a lot of uh, approval from authorities and so on. So maybe we go with drone for a small, small project. Right. So for instance, like LIDAR survey. So what, what is so special about the LIDAR survey? So some of the uh, points that I would like to highlight here is uh, it's able to acquire 500 million data points per hour, even more because with the current system and technology. So the laser sensor that uh, mounted on the aircraft here, so actually able to emit up to 1 million points per second. So the system that we normally use about uh, 200, 300 laser pulses per second, you just imagine per second, you can get, you can acquire more than 300 or 500,000 point survey points per second. So that's we're talking about the LiDAR, light detection using a light technology. So you emit a light uh, kind of pulses every second, more than 300,000 pulses per second. So you means that one is reflected from uh, any objects on the ground, it can measure the the, the, the locations and the height of every object. So for instance, okay, this is the, the photo of the system on board of the LiDAR, so the crew. And then for instance, like this, uh, what you can see here, these are the lasers coming from the uh, whatever uh, uh, objects on the ground, like this uh, KLCC and so on. So every second, it can measure up to 300 to 500,000 pulses, points per second. So you just imagine if uh, using the conventional survey, if you want to get one point, it might be, uh, take you about 20 minutes uh, to get the, the, the one point. But this one is this uh, technology. So you can get a few hundred thousand points just per second. So that is how within this kind of big area, might be a few seconds, it can swipe through about around this area and it can give you a very detailed kind of uh, survey information uh, within the area. So then easily you can get a profile building and then, then you can remove all those uh, with the uh, 
the, the, the software, the tools so that we can remove the building, we can remove the, the trees and so on. We can get the pure terrain data. So for instance, like this uh, Penang Island, we just flew about four hours and then uh, we do the processing and so on a few weeks. Then we can generate a very detailed terrain data for Penang Island using the LiDAR technology. So up to 15 centimeter digital terrain model. So these are, these are the technology we're talking about where it is a very, very important, very precise technology where you can use uh, good for like a flood mitigations, uh, flood modeling and so on. So these are, these are the, the, the tools. Okay, uh, move a bit detail on the analysis of the data from the LiDAR. So we can extract the buildings, we can remove the, the trees and then do the analysis of the slope of the terrain and so on. So these are, of the analysis we can do with the LiDAR data. And then we, if you're interested on the trees itself, the, the profile of the, the trees, so we can cross section, for instance, these are all palm here. Uh, this is the point cloud coming from the oil palms. This is the, the ground points that uh, penetrate to the, through the leaf. And then we can get the ground points and then we can get the points coming from the leaf. For instance, these are coming from the uh, vegetations here, the forest area, so these are, even this, uh, we can see it's track on the uh, power cable here, transmission lines here. So these are very detailed kind of survey that we can produce from this LiDAR technology. Okay, normally when we fly the LiDAR, so we couple up with the camera uh, system where sometimes people need uh, 20 centimeter autophoto. So these are the, the sample of the photo that also acquired uh, together with the LiDAR data. So these are some sample data in Penang uh, that we, we acquired the data recently. And then this uh, sample of the LiDAR data for, for flood. We, we done this for flood kind of uh, simulation, flood, flood analysis in KL. So you can see the confluence between Sungai Klang and Sungai Gomba here where these are the, the bot bottlenecks when uh, the, the, where, what do you call it, the, the flood started when uh, heavy rain and so on. So we can, it's actually, it's a video. Uh, this is a video three simulation slide, but uh, my, my laptop recently crashed, so I, I lost the, the video, so I need to recover back. So actually it's a video where you can see the first hour where the flood will be, will be raised and so on. So one hour, two hour and see, we can see the, the inundation area by hours, you know, so that is a, the powerful of this data, we can do the flood simulation, flood analysis. This is uh, a TTDI area where it's happened, the flood in the year 2006, I believe. So we have done the, the mapping for, for the area. So this is the, the real flood event. You can see the, the, the inundated area. And then this is our analysis. This is actually based on this analysis, we found out that where is the, 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 the cause of the floods. So based on this analysis, so that is the, 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 the good and then the importance of the precise data. And then these are the, the LIDAR data also used for Kuching Punya flood analysis. So they are proposing to have the diversion channel in Kuching, for instance, to reduce the, the flood. So then once they, they introduce this, uh, we try to simulate if the diversion channel put, put in here. So with whether the flood will be reduced. Of course, in the town area, the flood will be reduced. So we can overcome the problem here, but the, the upstream here is still the same. So those are kind of uh, simulations that we can do, the analysis that we can do if we have detailed data. And then this another kind of, uh, what we call it, a disaster, the dam break. Uh, we done this uh, project for TNB, so Kenya dam break analysis, we surveyed the, the LIDAR data over this area. And then what happened if the, the Kenya Dam breaks? So I also this uh, kind of a video, the simulation video for the first hour, second hour and third hour. So where the water will go, where the, the inundation area. So you can put in the evacuation plan properly and then if it happens, so you know what to do. So which area need to be evacuate, evacuated first and then so on. So within I think I believe uh, within less than 10 hours, uh, so this area will be flooded like this, and also uh, Kuala Terengganu and so on will be gone. So those are kind of uh, based on this analysis. So these are the, 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 the another risk might be 
so many dams in Malaysia, so maybe we need to have this kind of uh, risk analysis for each dam. Might be some dam are very old and so on, so they are open to the, the risk, you know. So that, that, that is another uh, kind of uh, disaster that we can look at. Okay, that is uh, on the ground, uh, on the airborne, just now we're talking about the airborne data acquisition. These are the ground survey technology we're talking about, that, not the conventional survey, we're talking about the terrestrial laser survey, a static one, the mobile laser survey, and then these are also the mobile laser survey, and then we have kind of the backpack kind of laser survey and so on. These are the, the technology available, so where it depends on the needs. So again, so these are the the, the, the tools or the, the technology available for us to, to use for uh, kind of uh, any applications. Okay, this are uh, one of the projects that we've done for TNB. So actually for mapping out the TNB asset uh, throughout the country. So currently TNB having a big program for mapping out their asset throughout the country. So we also involved in this project. So we are using this uh, system. So this is the camera system we've got uh six camera here and then this uh, we have the laser or lidar scanner here so we can uh, combine these two to, to become a uh, result uh, for the analysis to to get the locations of the tnb asset to do the to do the 360 photos uh, viewing and so on like uh, google what street view and so on so those are the the final product product from from these uh, systems so these are the 360 views. So if we, we have the software, we can rotate this uh, 360 photonomic photos uh, that's captured from the systems. And then these are the, from so like this, uh, the, 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 the LiDAR point cloud coming from the mobile system just now. So we can pinpoint, so every pose and so on the TNB asset from the systems. You know? So this is uh, to expedite the mapping process. Uh, that's why we use the, the, the technology. So instead of if you are going to get the uh, what we call it GPS coordinate for every pulse and so on. So they're going to be very tedious and very long process. So then this is another disaster landslide. So we involved in this uh, Bukit Stiawangsa uh, landslide. So as what you can see, so we, we receive a call about uh, 3 a.m. in the morning uh, for us to mobilize our team to the site because uh, they need to monitor this uh, earth movement because uh, whether the, the, the site still have the, the earth movement or not so we we place our what we call it uh static uh terrestrial tls terrestrial laser scanning here so we scan the slope every one hour in order to uh, measure whether any still any movement or not for this uh, kind of slope so uh when we reach in the morning so there are still some movement so we reported to DBKL and then they, they asked the, the resident, residents here to evacuate the area. So these are kind of uh, another tools, uh, another project that uh, related to the disaster. So this kind of uh, uh, technology is very useful, very, very useful. Then we scan the area, we come up with this uh, very detailed uh, slopes. So these are, we're talking about a uh, few centimeter accuracy of uh, slopes then uh, the the engineers everything they, they started to make use of the data to redesign the slope and so on so the 3d view of the the area where these are the the housing area affected this nearby to the the, the slope area and then also we, we we have a project with uh with jkr to map up the whole uh, sabah road federal road in sabah so to identify the the risk uh, the risk of the what you call it slope slope failure slope risk mapping along the road in sabah so we use the uh, airborne and also we use the mobile from the ground to the uh, laser to, to scan along the road so these are for instance like here these are kind of uh, uh, inventory of the landslide that happened so we can see clearly from from the lidar data so, and also they can do the debris flow analysis based on the, the, the data that we acquired. So these are clearly show that. These are what, yeah, if you remember, there are so many times happen along the, along the, some part of the uh, plus highway. So these are the potential debris, debris uh, flow, it might occur uh, 
in the future. So they need to take some mitigation measures in order to, 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 to avoid that. You know? So these are the, the, the how they make use of the data to, to prevent the risk, you know, to, to, to reduce the risk. Okay, in terms of uh, the data also, it's uh, very good for road design and so on. Of course, uh, when you're talking about the road, of course, we try to reduce as much as possible the, the, the slope, too much uh, to cut the slope and so on. So with this uh, kind of technology, so before you design the, the road, so we, you, you identify the most potential alignment and we fly. Normally, we fly the, the, the LiDAR over the area and then, then the engineers will do their, their design and then to put up uh, options for the alignments and so on, then they will select the best alignment and then they can do the cut and fill analysis of the, of the slope and so on. So these are the, the, among the applications where uh, we're talking about the risk reduction, of course, uh, when you design the road, so you have to really uh, reduce the, the, the slope failure risk and the accident. And then another, another important point and another important technology also the underground kind of uh, mapping also is uh, become very, very challenging, very, very important because uh, uh, especially in the, the town area, city center and so on. So uh, uh, if uh, kind of uh, miss, uh, what do you call it, uh, excavation when you, when you do the digging out the, the, the along the street and so on, there are uh, TNB cables, there are water pipes and so on, if you not properly know where they are and so on. So this very become very risky, very, very serious problem. It, you, you might uh, create a very serious problem to the community. So this is another kind of uh, uh, kind of a mapping that is very important currently in many, recently I involved in a project for Shah Alam where they engage a, a panel for any project by any kind of uh, service provider like TNB, Telecom and so on, if they have any project to dig out anything uh, along the road, so they have to engage this panel to uh, kind of uh, scan uh, underneath of this uh, road, for instance, uh, where there, there is any cable, any piping and so on. So in order to reduce the risk uh, of uh, uh, hitting the, 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 the pipes or the cables and so on. So those are another uh, mapping technology that is available for the, for instance, this uh, GPR ground penetrating radar, so we can detect up to few meter undergrounds, uh, any utilities and so on. So these are uh, these are the, the the technology that is available. All right. So for me, I believe uh, uh, come to the end of my, my, my presentation, I believe uh, I still within the time. So uh, just before I go to the conclusion, so in terms of uh, summary of my presentation, we come to the data acquisition, FYI mentioned just now, there are three major uh, platforms, three major companies from the satellite, from the airborne, from the ground survey equipment. And then come to the analysis and modeling, of course, uh, for the disaster. So it will meet the preparedness. So it means that you need to come up with the risk map and so on, respond how you want to respond to the disaster and then the recovery plan and the mitigation actions. So these are uh, involve uh, analysis and modeling of the data that we, we acquired using the geospatial technology. And it comes to the application system, we need to develop the disaster management portal, public disaster and safety portal, mobile app disaster ready app. So these are the, the, the major kind of uh, components when we're talking about the uh, disaster management, so disaster risk reduction, and so on. So then come to the my last slide conclusion. This special technologies and imaging field that, that enable us to acquire up to date and accurate data. So the important keyword here is the up to date and accurate data. We're talking about the disaster and so on. Of course, you need the up to date data. So for instance, the flood and so on. So you need to the up to date information. So, for many applications, especially for the disaster risk reduction. I think uh, that's all from me, the terminal. So I believe uh, I tried to, I, I, I just uh, selected a few slides slide where, where I have uh, more than 100 slides actually for from my presentation. I tried to, to just uh, select uh, the, the, the relevant slides to this uh, kind of presentation. Thank you so much. Any, I hand over back to you, Dr. Amiru.
Thank you so much, Mr. Sam. Uh, very uh, visual uh, presentation there. Lots of uh, uh, real world case scenarios uh, being presented. Uh, obviously, you know, in the future, we if we can have an all day event, you could present your hundred slides then. Okay. <laughs> Sure. Sure, 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 yeah. sure. Right. Um, uh, thank you so much for the both uh, presentation from for both. Yeah, you want to conclude? Uh, uh, so for me, so with this uh, kind of session, so as part of your objective is basically to promote your GODRR kind of a geometric for disaster risk reduction kind of a program. So I hope that we have done our job uh, for to meet that purpose and then uh, the, the audience today I believe close to 100 I, I saw this now so maybe already some of left already so I hope that we can attract the interest to participate or to be part of the teams uh, geometric for disaster redu reduction so I believe uh, this is another uh, like imaging technologies that currently uh, I mean, everybody is, is uh, looking into this and using these technologies and so on. I believe uh, this is going to be kind of, uh, I don't know if the as part uh, Dr. Kamala presented, he has been involved in this for so many years, but I don't think it's too late for us to, to for the UUM to start. And then uh, I hope that, I do hope that this uh, center that you're going to establish uh, is going to be part of the, going to, to contribute to the to the national kind of uh, disaster risk reductions uh, efforts and programs where the, the the blueprint of your your program basically I believe that going to take into consideration all the effort like UTM is doing might be the National Disaster Center at the Prime Minister is doing and so on so how we actually to, to contribute and to be part of the the whole program for the national program to to, to what you call it to further enhance to further improve the disaster risk reduction of the national at the national level i think with that no i think thank you very much for the, the opportunity given to me today thank you sure. thank you so much uh, mr Sam. so thank you again uh, both our distinguished speakers uh, dr kamaro and uh, mr sam uh, thank you again so hopefully uh, we will invite you uh, in our future events uh, with that, uh, I would like to thank you, everyone. Uh, we really appreciate you for being here. Uh, just a reminder to all participants, uh, please check uh, the link in the chat section to find the webinar evaluation form. So please uh, do that before you leave this session. Uh, again, ladies and gentlemen, we will like to request uh, for you to enable your video so we can take our final photo session for today's uh, seminar. Okay, Dr. Mazni, are we still waiting? Okay, still waiting. All right, sure. Uh, check. Okay, smile, everyone. One, two, three. One more, one more. Freestyle, freestyle. Okay, freestyle. <laughs> okay, one, two, three. Okay. All right. Okay, then. okay, thank you so much, Dr. Mazni. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Uh, hopefully, you've uh, gained as much as possible any knowledge, any insights regarding geometric disaster risk reduction. 
hopefully uh, we will be doing this uh, much more in the future and i hope that this will not be uh, the first and the last time you will be uh, in uh, attending uh, this uh, webinar so thank you so much again for everybody i hope to see you again in the future assalamualaikum and have a good day um,